Hello. Today is October the 4th. The time is about 12 minutes past 3 in the afternoon. This being 2024. But uh, around about this time, at least between 3 in the afternoon, and most likely half past three in the afternoon, 138 years ago, in the year 1896. Anton Bruckner, the composer, had reached the age of 72 years, one month and seven days of age. Early in the afternoon, he was to take his what was to be his last walk round the grounds of Schloss Belvedere. He was granted by the Austrian, Austro-Hungarian Emperor Franz Joseph II the use of one of the gatehouses as due to ill health in the last years of his life, Anton Bruckner could no longer climb stairs. It's... Um, I wondered why I've not been feeling right today, because I do feel a certain affinity with Anton Bruckner. Incidentally, it's said that if a human body is mummified, that that spirit cannot reincarnate into a new body, and possibly the spirit of Bruckner is very much alive. Certainly this year, the year that has been his uh, birth centenary, 200 years ago in 1824, he was born on the 4th of September. And I have heard slightly more than u usual uh, performances of various of Bruckner's compositions on the radio, but on the 4th of September, I had anticipated there would be something on the radio, but uh, alas, no. But uh, the joy of YouTube, um, I was able to select which w I actually played the 8th Symphony as a sort of my own personal s celebration. We're in inter interesting times. Two years ago, was the first performance on the 30th of November of the fully realised Ninth Symphony with all four movements in the most recent editing by Dr John A. Phillips of all the fragmentary pieces of the finale. Arguably it's the closest you'll ever get to hearing what Bruckner had intended. It is virtually complete and based on his sketches and other documentary evidence, knowledge of his composing style, it's a, it sounds to me like Bruckner. Many will object to this because we have a tradition of the Ninth Symphony only being played in three movements and it has become something of a comfort zone. So I would like to, or wish that perhaps this year marks a major turning point. Certainly this realised finale is gaining popularity, it is being performed more than over the previous decade, it is with each uh, with the passing of time, each generation, you're going to get uh, perhaps people who are more open to not staying with the tradition and exploring the what could have been the natural inquisitive about humanity. I've said um, before that that finale of the Ninth Symphony. Yes, it does sound different from anything Bruckner had previously written because it is stepping into the unknown. 
I feel this is why Bruckner had three close to death experiences in able to write the first three movements to go through that experience is put into the music and I feel very much what I hear in that last movement that it is talking what comes once spirit separates from matter so I thought uh, it sort of popped into my head normally I don't pay that much attention to, to dates or anything uh, or to time itself apart from I look at where the sun is in the sky to know roughly what the clock time is but uh, I operate very much in the flow of the weather and not so much the regimented clock time but we're getting off on a tangent here so it's a long time since I've made a video for this channel um, but I invite you assuming of course that you have an interest or a liking for the genre of what we can call classical music but this would be definitely in the late romantics period of the 19th century almost the culmination of the uh, Germanic Symphony or the expression of art through the Germanic Symphony. Yes, there are composers like Richard Strauss who comes slightly later and takes the, the Germanic Symphony into the 20th century. But the ninth in particular, if you listen to the opening, it, opening I'm not going to book, butcher it by trying to hum the theme, but it opens with a very soft tremolo strings out of the nothing comes something as it were and then you get that the opening D minor double boom boom drum beat which is very reminiscent in a very slow down version of what Beethoven had done with the opening of his Eroica symphony his symphony number no. three in E flat major it establishes the key that we're in that starts the work as I've uh, expressed in previous videos, I see that the keys A to G, which are seven, can also be compared to the energy centers, the seven chakras of the human body. So D minor would represent the sort of lower self in the heart, you could say. But I invite you to listen to the complete Ninth Symphony. You'll find uh, recordings in the playlists on this channel. But uh, maybe if I look to nature, about ten past three, the wind sort of suddenly picked up and now it's gone calm again. So maybe it was about ten past three. It is known that Bruckner went for this walk in the garden and then presumably after a light lunch and then went back and I, as I understand it he had a cup of tea and he passed sometime in mid-afternoon roughly between three and half past three what's fascinating is what comes next the next seven days where the souvenir hunters went in and took various manuscripts and things there was nothing catalogued which really should have been done at the time of Bruckner's passing immediately. Because from what I hear in that finale of that Ninth Symphony, what it is describing in purely in sound, and this is why I invite you to, when you listen to a piece of music, to listen to it internally. What I mean by that is, as you listen to the music, be, of, be aware of where you are feeling it in your body. Art is, by definition, it is creation. It is coming out of the imagination. It is a channel of, shall we call it, source, the oversoul or God, whatever you want to call it, that is expressed through the medium of the artist. And to me, the 
the high point of art is music because of all the arts that is the one that requires living beings to perform the music and bring it back to life bring it off of the pages of the music score and something to be experienced in the moment that is not to cast aside the wonders of technology in that you can have recordings that to a certain extent do capture the atmosphere of, of the time of the recording. I would say this has never been surpassed more, uh, never been surpassed. And its greatest expression is when you hear the late 1944 recordings of Wilhelm Furtwängler conducting in Berlin and the audience going to that concert would have been well aware of air raids, potential air raids, and they may not even get to hear the end of that concert. That may be their final journey. And there is a certain tension in that that I feel is captured in the recording. So I'm not dismissing recorded music, but certainly I feel there is a difference between studio recording and live performance recording. This was something the conductor Sergio uh, Celebedaka was very um, adamant about and all his recordings would seem to be live recordings. But it is in the moment. It's not about note perfect performances. There is the interpretation of the conductors. There is the energetic exchange with the audience and the conductor and the orchestra. It's something I have talked about in Nothing and a Half, a genesis for the Aquarian Age, which I will put a link to the playlist in this channel, because the way I discuss things is very much from the perspective of looking at the construction and layout of an orchestra and how that can be even an interpretation of how we conduct ourselves in this reality. So I'm not going to say it's a sad day, but it, it's, um, it, the energy as I've been making this video feels like it has changed. So I feel maybe the moment has passed 138 years ago, but there again, what really is time? It's just purely a concept. It's all, everything is held together ultimately by frequency. So if we are attuned with the five senses to the frequency of this moment, who's to say that sitting right next to me <laughs> could be Anton Bruckner, but on a different frequency and therefore in a different, uh, what we would call, era. But of all composers, it is Anton Bruckner that speaks most directly to me and a composer I feel very much an affinity to. In some ways you could say there is a sort of parallel. I mean, how long have I been making YouTube videos and not getting the rec recognition of a, a sudden upsurge in subscriber numbers into the multiple thousands? So there's a sort of parallel, maybe <laughs> I've got to parallel Bruckner's life with that, but um, I'm not actually that concerned, because that's a double-edged sword, because with that sort of notoriety, it's going to take up a lot of time. The more viewers you get to a video and the more comments, obviously takes time to read the comments and then respond to the comments and it starts eating into the most finite thing we have, which is time. That thing between birth and death, as Rudolf Steiner will often talk about, but I feel, just to end here, that that finale, that completed finale of the ninth, actually reveals about what comes next. Given in a pure sound, communication. What you get out of it, that will be down to you, but I invite you to listen to it anyway. 
Um, it is something I feel that does need pushing and does need promoting. So it does become accepted and it reaches out to a wider audience. In a way, it does give Bruckner, shall we say, a form of immortality. He lives on through his compositions, which we can enjoy and benefit from. I certainly have, and what I've got out of the music and the wonderful experience I've, I've had from listening to the various compositions, not just the symphonies, but the symphonies, I feel, do give a commentary of the entire journey from birth until death, expressed not just in the nine symphonies, but also including the symphony known as the Nolta, symphony number zero, and what Bruckner referred to as his study symphony, the one in F minor, which has now taken on the number of double zero. But they're all in the playlist for you to discover. About 98% of Bruckner's compositions are covered in the various playlists. As and when, if there are recordings of the few missing pieces, I will add them in to the appropriate playlist and give a notification through video on here. So, sparing a thought and a celebration of Anton Bruckner, that sort of really closes the 200th year celebrations. But of course, we can take the date 30th of November as another celebration. It's when Bruckner completed the third movement of the Ninth Symphony in 1894. It is the date of the first realized four movement Ninth Symphony in the most recent edition of that finale by Dr. John A. Phillips, along with uh, three other composers and musicologists who collaborated, but this final editing is purely Dr. John A. Phillips, and to me it is a most accurate, probably the most accurate re recording wherever, or uh, manuscript we're ever going to have that's as close to what Bruckner intended unless, of course, those missing manuscripts do appear that actually went missing in those first seven days after Bruckner's demise. It is a sort of crime scene. It's a sort of um, playing detective um, looking back in history and trying to ascertain who may have taken those final pages. Was it just souvenir hunters? Was it others who recognised something being conveyed in that music. I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it isn't, but from my perspective and what I feel about particularly that finale, that that is why those missing folk, there are those missing folios that have never surfaced. I don't feel they were taken by souvenir hunters, but by those that maybe knew humanity wasn't ready to hear the message at that time. Maybe it is still to come. Time will tell on that, but I hope that this 138-year period becomes a marker and a start of a whole new reappraisal of Bruckner and uh, putting him up more on the map, ranking on alongside Mozart and Beethoven. So that's it for this video on this wonderful, glorious day, the October the 4th in this year, 2024, but also reflecting back on October the 4th in 1896. Thank you very much for listening.